What we'll be doing next is we're going to put together a very simple website. And this is going to be created locally on our own computer so that we are going to learn how to bring in images locally and to make local links. And we're going to be setting this up so that this website will be very easy to transport to a server or to any other location. I did want to point out to you that in Atom, I currently have the file open that we were working on in one of the previous lessons. I have made a new root folder for the lesson we're going to be working on here. And I just wanted to point out something that happens in Atom. So here I am, here is my lesson 04 folder, and here's the new folder that I made. I'm calling it 0407. It is a root folder that is very similar to what we have right here. The only exception is that I've put some images into my image folder, so we have some elements to work with. I'm going to grab the root folder and drag it to the Atom window pane, like we've done before, and you'll see that now I have two root folders that have been added. I recommend that normally you don't work in this way because it can be a little bit confusing. So how do you get rid of the original root folder? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Sometimes you might be unsure which project is which, especially if you're naming your folders root because they have the exact same name. I do want to point out that if I open this index file, which is going to look identical, you're going to see that this top portion of Adam is going to show me the path to this particular file. So this file is located in the 0407, which is the one I want to be working on. This file is located in 0406. So this file is coming from this root folder. If I double click on this, you can see that that's active. So in this way, I know that this is the one I want to get rid of. I will simply right click or command or control click and you can remove the project folder. So when you do that, that folder has now been removed. I'm going to close this file. And this is the index file that is associated with this particular root folder, which is 0407. So we are going to build a website and this is just going to be a sea life website. So I'm going to give the title of the page, something that is more relevant to what we're doing. And once again, this website is going to be really simple. I'm not going to worry too much about the content that we're placing within the website, but I do want to point out how to make these local images function. And then in the next lesson, we'll look at how to make local links function once we build out a few pages. I am going to start off by making my H1 tag. And again, I just typed H1 in tab. That's a real quick way to make both the opening and closing tags. And we will say, welcome to the Sea Life website. I'll make an H2 tag. And I'm just going to make an unordered list. The unordered list will have my little list items. And these are going to ultimately be links to the other pages in my website. So this will kind of serve as the navigation, if you will. OK, so now we have our H1 and our H2 and our unordered list. When I am building a website, I generally like to preview what I'm building or at least have a browser window open. So as I make things, I can kind of see what's happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my root folder and I am going to click on my index page. Now, if I double click on my index page, it will open in Chrome. Chrome is my default browser. If you wanted to force your HTML page to open in something other than the default browser, you can always right click on that file and then you can say open with and it will give you a list of all of the applications that are going to be able to handle this particular file type. So if I wanted to open it in Firefox, I could choose that or Microsoft Edge. Just know that if your default browser is not the browser of your choice, you can simply right click and say open with. I will simply double click and this will force the page to open in the browser. Now you can see that the page is currently completely blank. It is not displaying any of this content that I had entered in Atom. And the reason why is because I have not yet saved my file in Atom. So this is showing the last saved version of my web page. I know that it hasn't been saved because of this little blue dot that appears up here to the right of the name. 
This is an indication that you've made changes on your web page and you have not yet saved those changes. So as soon as we go to file save, that will disappear. And now if I come back to my browser and I click the refresh button, it will display the information that we had entered on our web page. So just know that that little visual tip, if you see the dot, that means you haven't saved your page. We are gonna ultimately be making some additional changes to this page, but for right now, I wanna show you how we deal with local images. It is worth pointing out that in my images directory, I have a bunch of images. So if I want to display one of these images here on my page, I'm going to make my image tag. And once again, I can just type IMG and hit tab. And then that will automatically make the rest of the tag. So it's gonna enter the source attribute for us as well as the alt attribute. And we need to plug in the values. I want to display an image. In order to do that, I need to tell my web page where that image is located relative to where I am right now. Currently, I'm on my index page. I wanna go into the images folder and find one of these files. So if we do images forward slash, and then I put the name of the image, batray.jpg, and of course I'll add an alt tag. And if we save the page and preview in the browser, you can see that my image now shows up. When you are pointing to something, you just have to be aware of where you're at and then navigate there. So when we want to go into a folder, we say the folder name, then we say the file name. Now let me show you what happens if we make a web page in the pages folder. I am going to go ahead and copy all of this information. I'm going to click on my pages folder and I'm going to right click and say new file. This will force a new file to be created in the pages directory. And this will be our Batray page. So we'll just call it batray.html. You'll notice that I'm using the camel casing and I made sure to add the extension. Now you can see my HTML page. It has been created in the pages directory. This is my Batray page. It is now open as well as my index page back here. I'm gonna click in the Batray page and I will use the keyboard shortcut of Command or Control V to paste. And then we're going to go ahead and just start at the top down and work our way through this page and make changes. So obviously my title is going to need to be different. And then instead of welcome to the Sea Life website, we'll say bat rays and we will say bat rays um, visit San Diego seasonally. And let's get rid of this unordered list. And maybe we wanna show the bat ray two picture. So I'm just gonna update to bat ray two. Everything looks pretty much the same as we had in our index page. I will save this page, and currently I have no way to link to this page, so I'm just gonna go back to my root folder and I'll open the pages folder, and I can either double click, or another trick to force a file to open in a particular application is you can just grab the file and drag it to that application. So if I drag it to Chrome and let go, it's opened a new tab, and here is my Batray page. Now you will notice that I have a broken link and this is to be expected. The reason the link is broken is because the path is no longer correct. Right now I'm in the pages folder. What this bit of instruction says is it says, hey, reach out and find a folder and it's gonna assume it would be in pages called images and then find bat ray. Well, that doesn't exist. I need to actually come up and out of the pages folder. I need to come up one level. In order to come up one level, we use dot dot forward slash. That takes us up one level. If I do dot dot forward slash, that now puts me in the root folder. Then I can say images, which will put me inside the images folder. Then I can say batray2.jpg, which is gonna find the file. So if we save this file, and come back to the browser and refresh, now the image displays correctly. This is an example of relative paths. And all you need to really remember is that when you are going down into directories, into folders, you just need to put the folder names and technically you could string them together. So if I had a folder called images and then inside that I had a folder called eels and then inside that I had a folder called Pacific 
and inside that I had my file, then the path to get to this particular eel image is going to look something like this. So when we see several elements separated by forward slashes like this, we know these are directory names or folder names. So once again, this means, hey, find a folder called images, find a folder called eels, find a folder called Pacific, and inside that resides this eel.jpg. Conversely, if we had something that was like dot dot forward slash, dot dot forward slash, images, eels, Pacific, eel.jpg, this means that we would be coming up two levels. So I, I don't know where I am, but I would have to be two levels deep. So for instance, maybe there's a folder inside of the pages folder and I'm on that particular file. I have to come up one level, come up another level, and then drill down into the folder names. We'll have lots of practice using this, but I did want to point it out because it's a really important concept. This is an example of relative paths. So these are all relative to where we are. And I like to liken this to the little metaphor that if I am in my neighborhood, I'm taking my dog for a walk and I run into one of my neighbors and I start chatting with them and they say, hey, where do you live? I don't have to give them my actual address. I can just say, I live at the house with the blue door or I live at the house with the big tree. And because it's relative to their knowledge of where I am, they understand that, oh yeah, I know where the house with the blue door is. I know where the house with the big tree is. I don't have to tell them my whole address. If I run into a person and I'm in a different part of town, a different city, and we have the same conversation, and they ask me where I live, and I say, I live at the house with the blue door, they're not going to understand where that is because they have no context. I need to tell them the specific city I live in, the street I live in. I might have to actually give them the number for my house. So that would be an example of an absolute path. That is an example of when we do HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www dot whatever dot com forward slash, you know, wherever we need to send them. But these are examples of relative paths. When we're building a website, it is very common that when we are linking to files and folders and different elements within our website, we're using this relative path structure. And this is what makes our website portable. We can go ahead and take this root folder and put it anywhere, right? I could move it to a different server, I could move it to a different location, and everything is still gonna function. So we'll have lots of practice using these relative paths, but I just wanna make sure that you understand how they work.